This is my 2021 CRF 300L. I bought this bike originally with the mindset that it was a cheap bike, but a very good platform and could be an excellent bike in this day and age. And I do agree that that is the case. However, I think there are a number of modifications that could be done to this thing by Honda that wouldn't break the bank, would still keep this bike as a budget motorcycle and make it a superb motorcycle. This is not a dream list of absurd things. Oh, Honda, if only you'd put a 450, no, no, no. no. These are all reasonable things that should not change the price of this bike, but would make it way better. Because I believe in this thing, I want it to be good. So I'm gonna give you my list of five things I think Honda needs to change about this bike to fix it. And we're out here on the road doing this video today. I could've done this in the garage. It is like in the upper 30s right now. And now we can do fun things like this, you know? So I've got hot wired heated gear on, which actually makes this really tolerable. I got these in medium right now. I'm also filming on the Insta360 camera out there. As you can see, it is a whole contraption. We have videos on these as well. As well as the CRF 300L you're seeing, yes, it's highly modified at this point. We run this thing in all sorts of different trims and modes. If you're not a normal viewer to the channel and it is, it's a lot of fun. Anyway, enough blabbing. Let's get into the list. Number one, it's the kickstand. I know that's a weird thing on the list. You're gonna see some of these things are gonna be obvious things that you would think you were gonna know we're gonna talk about, and some of them are different, but you need to hear me out. If you purchase one of these bikes, one of the first things you're gonna notice is the kickstand is like oddly too short. The bike will lean too far over on the kickstand from the factory. This seems like a really goofy oversight by Honda, a big manufacturer. It actually means I need to make sure when I go to park this thing, you to find a hill leaning it the wrong way. And that problem gets even worse if you actually fix the suspension. Spoiler, that's coming up. And here's the thing that's even crazier. Here's how Honda could fix this so easily. Look at the previous version of this bike, the CRF 250L. It has a kickstand that looks like it would fall right onto this thing. Like the, the mechanism looks exactly the same, but it's longer. Now in our case, we actually put a T-Rex racing adjustable kickstand on here. For me, because I have supermoto wheels and enduro wheels, you know, like I'm, I'm swapping back and forth. An adjustable kickstand could be really good. You know, these bikes are produced in Thailand and they love to motard these things and lower them. Built because they're shorter people. And it almost makes you wonder, like, did they build the kickstand knowing that a lot of the people over there would be doing that and that was a popular market for the bike? I can understand making things work for the market, you know, it's gonna be the main seller or whatever, right? But, but you can't make the bike unsafe, Honda. So seriously. We need a longer kickstand, but I'm willing to bet that a 250L kickstand will work. I have not actually tested, so I cannot say for sure, but it is cheaper. It could be a, could be a gamble you may want to take. Horses, number two, the headlight. We didn't get the LED headlight over here. We were following this bike from when it initially was announced and the pictures came out and blah, blah, blah. You saw the LED headlight. It looked like they took the headlight off the CRF, 450L. It is slightly different. At least the shroud is. I can't say for the whole thing. But basically, it's the 450L RL, whatever they're calling it now, headlight. Holy shit. Got cops out here and ambulances and all kinds of She's back in the ambulance down there. Ooh. And that's like a straight up rescue boat, though. Dream ship. Holy balloon thing. Did a balloon go down in the water? Did a balloon go down in the water? No, it's not in the water. It was just a safe landing. Everyone's good, though? Oh, yeah. Did they get the balloon? They'll get it later. They'll get it later. Yeah, we'll probably have to get a helicopter and fly it out. Take it easy. A real one. They didn't catch that. They didn't land in the in the water. They just landed somewhere probably kind of close to it. And there wasn't a, a, a real way out. So they had to get get pulled out like that. It's pretty wild. All right. The LED headlight. We were promised we were going to get. We didn't get it. And the weird thing was they threw it on in other markets. To be fair, this is one of those items that if we part, start putting it on there, the price might go up a little bit. The kickstand is, is like not really, right? Like what? Maybe a couple bucks in materials. The LED headlight would add a couple bucks. But it's kind of silly that we didn't get it on our American versions, and I think the UK versions and some other countries didn't get it. It's like, it literally makes the bike look dated. I mean, it's got, you know, it's fancy new looking plastics and it's got the, the new 300 motor. It's got some good upgrades all around. And then you slap that headlight on it and it just makes it look dated and just, ugh. We fixed it on ours, but it's not exactly cheap nor easy to do what we did. I do think you could copy what I did uh, in the videos, like to make the bracket behind and then just put a different LED headlight on if you don't want to buy this real expensive one. There's ideas like that too. You would still have great headlight over stock. I mean, this headlight is insane. You're late, buddy. You missed the party. Anybody old school uh, viewers? 
remember this little uh, farm right here. Stephanie's gone. Y'all told me to name her Stefan originally, which I think was a PewDiePie thing, and then it turned out it was a girl, so we changed it to Stephanie. But Stephanie's gone now. Anyway, LED headlight. We need it, Honda. Moving on, number three is the air filter air box situation on this bike. Again, I know you might be thinking, Jake, that I'm not following you. This isn't going to be something that stopped me from buying it or enjoying it. Just Hang on, let me first explain to you the procedure of getting to this air box on this bike. You have to remove the seat, then you need to remove a side panel. Then you need to remove, it's like five or six little sheet metal style screws. Those are meant to be reused again and again into plastic. Pop off the door and then undo some clips and pull out your paper, paper element filter. Annoying to say the least. On a dirt bike dual sport thing like this, it's pretty universal that the air filter can be gotten to. No tools, you can pop off the door and get to it because that is needed sometimes. You know, we're going through muddy, watery conditions. You, you need to sometimes be able to do that. And then number two, the filter is serviceable because it's a foam style filter. This is very backwards of what we have on our CRF. You can't quickly access it. You can't quickly clean it. Let me show you what we're looking at here. What do you want? I don't care. I'm not going that way. I'm just, I'm just stopping here, man. <laughs> so this is the panel in question, right? And here's how you could fix it. I know initially it's gonna sound like it's gonna cost more money, Honda, but hear me out. So we just make this plastic panel. We give it maybe like two or three of those like little half twisters, right? So we can pull this off quickly. We need to add a border in here that meets with a seal in the air box, right? We don't have to change the air box. See, I'm, I'm just, you only have to change this. And we don't have to build the air box door anymore. This is the only real part that has to change. We can still keep the air box the way it is. Just make the paper element filter that comes out a foam filter. We changed ours to a foam filter through modifications and upgrades. But that's really obnoxious. It should just be that way. It's one of those things where you just look at it and you go, that's easily fixable. And it would make it, let's be honest, like a real dirt bike. I know, it's probably something a lot of y'all weren't considering, but I, I think it would help. Number four is the motor. This was the thing with the old 250L. It wasn't a bad little bike. It just felt really soft to me with that engine. Like, like really soft. When you heard they were putting the CBR motor in this thing, nothing to get crazy excited about. But if you look up like dynos, for instance, of like stock, CBR 300s, uh, they end up making like, I think like almost 27 horsepower at the wheel. If you can compare it to bikes like the WR250R, I, uh, I think those are around 24 to 25 at the wheel. So it's like, hell, we got more. And, and you know, it's like, this is this should be good. We should be winning. To know you would start there, it means, okay, you throw a pipe on it, you throw a tune, a reliable 30 horsepower should be very reasonable. And 30 on a dual sport bike like this with like huge long-term maintenance intervals and things like that is honestly great. Anyways. <laughs> The point is, we didn't get that engine. They did several things to this engine that just made it a little bit too mellow. Here are some things they could have changed from the factory that wouldn't cost them any money that make this engine a little bit better. One, the CBR cams. Now, we swapped them in here, and I mean, it's only cost me, I think, 80 bucks for the set of cams, which is pretty unbelievable. They're that cheap. And they are going to give you a little bump in power. And with those cams, we picked up a ton of bottom end. We didn't pick up almost any top end, and, and I think that's because of the snorkel, which we've also changed out now. The CRF snorkel versus the CBR snorkel is pretty significantly different, and the CBR one definitely makes a lot more power. I'm sure there's plenty of people watching this going, do you really need more power? It's not that you need a whole lot more, you just need a little bit of snap. Swap the cams, swap the air boot, and it makes this bike way better. Still completely reasonable for any new rider. It's not like overly hardcore. By the way, there's a lot of different things we're referencing that we've done to this bike throughout this video. And a lot of stuff can be found in our build series on this bike playlist. Also, there is a longer uncensored version of this video over on Patreon. Uh, we also have our own Discord server over there. You can hang out, chat with us. I'm in the voice chats for five days a week. I'm in there every evening just chilling with everybody. And it's only $1 a month if you want to join that. So basically, the short of it is we need a little bump in power and it shouldn't cost Honda any money. And then finally, number five. And you probably know what number five is if you know anything about this bike. But we gotta say it anyway, and that is the suspension. The suspension on this thing stock is so soft. It's unbelievably soft. I don't know what the reasoning is for the suspension being that soft, but I kind of, again, sort of suspect maybe just a little bit does have to do with that tie market we were talking about before. They sell a lot of bikes there. They build them there. If someone's like, hey, you know, make them springs like this. They may have made them like this. You never know. When you pull this thing off kickstand, about a third of the suspension is eaten up, especially in the rear, by its own weight. It literally, its own weight is doing that. Now, I will 
saying, if your goal is just to cruise around just on light trails, you'd probably be all right. Again, just like everything on this bike, we have, you know, we've upgraded it. Full race sex shock in the rear. You can see the reservoir right here, reservoir. And yes, this is where you're supposed to mount it. I always get people say, shoot a mount it there. It's going to get too hot for the engine. It won't work right. And we've thrown some springs and valving in the front forks. Like if you want to spring and valve them for the Asian markets the way they are, sure, whatever. But would it really be that big a deal if on the assembly line we had two different versions of the suspension, European and American markets, right? Both the Americas, North and South, Australia, places where we ain't little people. All they would have to do is basically add to their assembly line suspension A and suspension B. But this is something, again, from Honda's standpoint, I don't see it costing them any real significant money, and it would make the bike so much better right out the gate. And that's it. That's my list of five items. You do those five items, Honda. I'd be more willing to recommend it. You know, right now, someone's like, should I get the 300L? I'm like, oh, it's a great little bike. Just consider what it really does good, and if you wanted to make it do better, you can, but you're gonna have to throw some money at it. The condition mine's in right now, I love it. I think it's a great little bike, but you know, it requires some work. I guarantee you a number of those items I mentioned, maybe not all of them, some of those are more niche things you would know after buying it, but some of them will turn people off. I mean, I think there's a lot of people who've seen reviews and they say, ah, it's just way too soft, you know? Like I was listening to High Side, Low Side the other day podcast. And uh, what's his name? Spurgeon was basically saying this is a short street bike that can do like, like a little bit of off-roading or something. <laughs> like pretty well on this thing, pretty bad. And I was like, ah, oh, come on, it's not that bad. But I guess in stock trim it is. And I think if they made those little upgrades, little changes, people like him would review it better. You know, people that, you know, review these bikes and give us opinions that we all base opinions off of and then make decisions and buy things and blah, blah, blah. What do you think? If you, if you own this bike, what do you think they need to change? Or if you're in the potential buyer, what's stopping you from buying one of these bikes? What's something that they would need to change to make you go, yeah, I'll pull the trigger on that. And if not either one of those, what would you like to see in the market, in the industry? Let me know. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. Woo!